let's do a bit of a brain activity. Think about a car that you see all the time, every day, and you probably never even notice it. 2009 Lexus RX 350, the best-selling luxury crossover. RX is one of the models that put Lexus on the map in the late 90s, the early 2000s. The Lexus RX was also known as the Toyota Harrier in foreign countries up until 2013. The first generation RX came out in 1998 as a 1999 model. It was named the RX 300 due to its 3 liter 1MZ FE V6. It made 200 horsepower and 222 pound-feet of torque and it was either going to the front wheels or an all-wheel drive system with the 50-50 split center coupling. RX 300s were built in Toyota's Miata plant in Japan. The RX 300 was a unibody crossover which was pretty out of the ordinary especially in the late 90s. The only crossover SUVs that I could think of will crossover is the Jeep Cherokee and that was unibody but that was still considered an SUV. It was updated in 2000 and it got restyled headlights with optional HID headlights, restyled taillights and an optional navigation system. The first gen RX won SUV of the year for 1999 and it was also named most appealing luxury SUV by JD Power and Associates. The second generation RX like this model came out in 2003 as a 2004 model. It was renamed to be the RX330 because of its larger 3.3 liter 3MZ FE V6. They came standard with front wheel drive or optional all wheel drive, which was pretty similar to the first generation Highlanders of the same time. These Gen 2 RXs were loaded with all new technology for the early 2000s, like rain sensing wipers, adaptive front headlights, air suspension, and adaptive cruise control. Most RXs that weren't hybrids like this one were built in Ontario, Canada, but the hybrids were still built in Toyota's Miata plant in Japan. The RX and Highlander hybrids were powered by the same 3.3 liter V6, but they were also assisted by electric motors, two of them to be exact, one that assisted the front wheels and one that assisted the rear wheels. The RX 400H had a 0 to 60 time of 7.3 seconds, which made it faster than the regular RX 330, and it had the fuel economy of a compact sedan, which gave it a super ultra low emissions fuel rating. The RX 400H was also the first production Lexus hybrid, which got the ball rolling for vehicles like the CT200H, the HS250, the forgettable ones, and stuff like the flagship LS600H. The RX was restyled in 2007, which gave it a new grille, chrome door handles, new alloy wheels, and of course, the biggest change, the 3.5 liter 2GR FE V6 that makes 270 horsepower. A fun fact, Lexus actually still uses this engine today. You know, it's been given direct injection and all kinds of things, but they still use it in the new RX and the new ES and even the new GS. But the GS, rest in peace. For one year only, Lexus offered a Pebble Beach edition of the RX 350, which gave it a different front grille, different wheels, some special trim on the interior, like on the leather and on the dash, and a bunch of badges on the exterior. Lexus only made 6,000 of them, so it's kind of uncommon to see them, but you might see them every once in a while. Lexus released the all-new third-generation RX 350 in 2010, which still uses the same 3.5 liter V6 and the perfect equation for an RX, comfort, reliability, and style. The third generation RX 350 is also related to the Toyota Venza, the first generation Venza, which uses the same V6 engine and it, had the same, it used the same platform and it kind of looked the same too. The third gen was also the first generation of the RX to offer an F-Sport trim level, and it was refreshed for 2012. The third gen still offered the hybrid, but it was renamed to be the RX 450H because it used a bigger 3.5 liter V6 and it made more power. 
We're now on the fourth generation RX, which still uses the same old 2G RFE 3.5 liter V6 and also an optional hybrid system with that, but it's bigger, it's more angular. It came out in 2016, but compared to its closest rivals like the Acura RDX and other similarly sized vehicles, it's kind of ready for a refresh. Toyota even released the new Venza, which isn't based off of the RX, but it's a hybrid only, really sleek looking crossover. This RX in particular is a 2009 RX350 all wheel drive with the Mark Levinson and navigation package in breakwater blue. The navigation and Mark Levinson package gave you the Mark Levinson premium audio system, DVD based navigation, HID headlights, a power tilt and telescoping steering wheel, memory link key fobs, and a roof rack. So this RX is a post-facelift second gen model. I honestly like these more than the older ones. They just look a bit classier and a bit more refined to me. You see these things so much that they don't look like much, but when you get a good look at one, they look really nice. I like how the HID headlights look and perform over the halogens. For a reference in size, an 09 RX is about 5 inches shorter than an 09 MDX. This one has these snazzy 18 inch alloys which also come with the premium package. People know these RX's for having the clear Altezza style taillights, which I don't mind, but I've always wondered what some red tint would look like on these cars. I do have to say, I love the overall look of these. They're definitely on the soft side, but I dig it. Popping the trunk reveals 38 cubic feet behind the second row and 85 cubic feet with the seats folded down. The RX can tow up to 3,500 pounds when properly equipped. The interior of the RX definitely fits with mid 2000 2000s Lexus. Elegant and ergonomically satisfying. The real wood trim makes this feel so much more premium than it is, which is a trait of Lexus's from this era. Everything also feels well buttoned down, even for being 11 years old. No creaks or rattles to be found in this thing. Just the seats are so comfortable. I love driving this thing. I could drive this thing cross country and back. And they've also worn pretty nicely. This car has 118,000 miles and the seats still look brand new in this. Even the driver's seat, you know, it's not discolored. It doesn't have too many wrinkles in it. doesn't have any tears. I'm impressed. I also like that this has a power tilt and telescoping wheel and just the wood. This mid 2000s Lexus wood feels so nice. It's, you know, just on anything and it's real wood. I actually like this more than the piano black just because it doesn't have, you know, that same effect, but it feels so nice. So yeah, three spoke leather wrap wheel. You do have a few controls on it. Like on the left, you have some audio controls. On the right, you have your Bluetooth controls. I love the gauges in this car because when the car is off, they're just completely black. You can't see anything. And as soon as you turn the car on, it's like an LCD screen of just gauges. You know, there's not a lot going on in here. They are easy to read. I've not noticed any glare when you're, you know, driving. Oh, you just have your tack, speedo, fuel, and coolant temperature, nothing else. Now coming to the center stack, this model does have the navigation system, which was optional, but it doesn't do anything like real-time traffic or weather or anything like that. It's pretty easy to use. It's, it, it is a touchscreen, but you do have a bunch of hard touch buttons underneath it. Something I don't like about this system is that you have to go into the screen to control the fan speed and the modes for the climate. You do have some hard touch buttons for the climate control. It is dual zone, but you know, you just have the temperature front and rear defrost and then the passenger temperature, but you have to go into the screen to use the climate stuff. Underneath all that, you have your Mark Levinson audio system. It sounds real good. It still has a tape cassette player in it, you know, but it's 2009. Some cars in 2011, 12 still have these things for some reason. So it doesn't really bother me. I like that this car has an individual button for the headlight washers, because sometimes I just want to clear the windshield without getting the car dirty. If I just cleaned it, I go through this with my car. So I like being able to just press that button and it does that. Then when you put it in reverse, you do have a backup camera, no guidance lines. The quality is better than some new cars that I've seen. It's not that bad. It is offset, so it might, you know, set you off. That's punny, is it? The center console of this car is pretty interesting. It does move forward and backwards, but I can't figure out how to do it. 
but you have two pretty big cup holders in the front and then behind that you have this center console if you push open it opens and if you push close it closes you can fit a small bag in there or some things it's not huge but it's nice that it's there and also you know the glove box of course so there's plenty of storage in this car the rear seat of the rx is also a pleasant place to be there is still that wood trim that's on the doors i like how they do it so you know legroom the seat is all the way back because it does an easy exit easy entry thing so you know so i have like two in two three inches of legroom uh, behind that and i can fit my feet under the seat you also have nap pockets so you know i'm pretty comfortable back here I think you could fit three adults back here in, or, you know, three car seats, but you buy an RX, don't put kids in, like little kids in your RX, don't mess the car up. Uh, Cause like, look at how nice your car could be if you don't do that. But you know, that's another rant for another day. You know, the rear seats, they're very soft, very comfortable. They also recline and you have this center armrest here and you have two cup holders, which, you know, they accommodate pretty large drinks. And then you have this other little center console back here, which you can actually put a lot of things in there. If it's no phone time, you can have the kids put their phones in here. That's a bad idea. Sorry, people my age, but whatever. If you're sitting in the middle seat, unless if you, you know, kind of spread eagle, this center console kind of protrudes. But I did see in another video that it slides somehow. Behold. The 3.5 liter 2GR FE V6. Toyota still uses this engine today in the Camry, the RX, the ES, what else? The Sienna, the Highlander, <laughs> literally everything. That shows how bulletproof this engine is. In this application, it makes 270 horsepower and 251 pound-feet of torque, and that's going to all four wheels and a five-speed automatic. As for fuel economy, you should be expecting about 18 in the city and 23 on the highway on premium gas. The RX400H did make a bit more power than this. I don't have an exact number, but fuel economy did go up a little bit, especially in the city because, you know, the gas engine shuts off and then, you know, when you're on the highway, it'll go on and off whenever it thinks so. But you can't put it in a dedicated EV mode, so the car does all the thinking. So I've been driving this RX for mm, a few days, you know, like for little periods of time uh, because I've tried to film this video like three times. Um, but every time I drive it, it's just like quick summary. If you don't have time to watch the whole driving portion of this video, it drives real nice. It's real smooth. It's comfortable. The steering, you know, it handles well. Of course, it's not like a, it's not like it's not a sporty SUV by any means, but it doesn't feel all roly poly like uh, you know like a roly like a heavy car. Um, it just feels like an RX. If you're used, if you've driven any RX before, it feels like that. It feels higher quality than the Highlander of this time. The only thing that reminds me, so there's two noises that I hear. There's one thing with the leather, it's a little bit squishy. I don't know if it's my tripod or my camera that's being annoying back there. Um, but the leather, it's like making a squishy noise that, you know, uh, if you move something around, it'll be fine. The other thing is the tires. There is a bit of road noise. Um, but I think that's because the tires on this car are just old. But the V6 is silky smooth on normal acceleration. Uh, you know, that's something that Toyota has done really well because they've made V6 engines since, well, the first V6 Toyota that I can think of was the second gen Camry with the 2.5 V6 and the first gen ES250. And look at this yo-yo with the door open. This is off topic, but for people that leave the car door open in the middle of the street, you're asking for your door to get, you know, like, I'm about to go on a road that's more empty. Um, so I can see how it is, you know, it has like, you know, the shift down things, but why would you like that? Eh, you don't need that. That's, you know, useless. So let's see here. Well, this is kind of a corner, but Okay, so we're going to do a bit of a, a little 
test to see how the V6 is. I'm at a light and you know, this road is empty, so. Wow, that was zero to 70. The thing picks up. Uh, so, so once you're up to speed, the, uh, you know, it kind of is like, uh, uh, I mean, like when you're driving it aggressively, uh, let's see a little bit here, you know, so the engine does pull, it pulls strong, you know, 270 horsepower. Of course, it's not fast because it's an RX 350. Um, yeah, and the car isn't light, you know, it's kind of heavy, um, somewhere around 4,000 pounds, I would guess. Uh, it's effortless, effortless acceleration, effortless power. Um, we're gonna get on it here if I don't get cucked by this golf. Okay, so now I kind of understand it just it rolls and there's body roll and when the body does roll um it just doesn't feel as planted and solid as you'd like it to be but you know who's gonna drive an rx you know like you can hear when the valves kick in like it just it has a good sounding engine it's quiet it's buttery smooth Whoa, there's nothing I can complain about. Um, the road noise is the only thing, uh, but I really think that's just tires. These RXs are one of the most bulletproof and reliable SUVs pretty much built ever. You only have to worry about regular maintenance like brakes, tires, and all that kind of stuff. The V6 in these runs on a timing chain, so you don't have to worry about replacing a belt every 100,000 miles. But the only thing, the only thing with these RXs that really, well, you should look for when you're test driving one, well, check out the steering, is the power steering rack, because that is quite an expensive fix and that is known to go out once you start pushing mm, like 150 to 200,000 miles some maybe even before that it's like $1,200 depending on where you take it to get fixed so when you're test driving it just make sure that the steering doesn't feel weird make sure that the power steering pump is full of fluid and make sure that it doesn't leak any fluid if you're looking to buy a Gen 2 RX, these things go anywhere from $3,000 to $15,000 on the used market. It just depends on mileage and condition, but these older Toyotas have a cult following, so they're starting to go up in value. 